what they go do with me now I'm still a talk of the town Don't need assistance, I'm hooking them down We turn the smiles into frowns You can't hop out, then we clearing the crowd In the sub, paid off, no rent I've been managing the shit you can't handle What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Brianna Imani, and you're tuned in to another Talk of the Town interview. And who do I have in the building today? Journey Montana, you know. Yes, Miss Journey Montana. I'm so happy to have you. Thank you for stopping Aww. by. How are you feeling, sis? Thank you for having me. Um, I'm feeling good. Mm -hmm. It's cold outside, but... It's really getting brig. I know. Do you think it's time to pull out the Uggs or no? Cause I was I was honestly debated. I, I pull like, out the Uggs in fall, so it's a, it might be about that time. Cause I feel like in New York, it's like a thing. Like yeah, everybody like waits for the first person to pull out the Uggs <laughs> to pull out the big black puffer, and it's like, yeah. like you see one person mm -hmm. do it, all right, you valid. But I think it's getting to be that time. Yeah, it's about that time. You know, I'm quick. I pull out the puffer real Girl. quick. So all right, so I know you from New York. Tell the people that don't know where you from. I'm from Harlem. Uptown. Born yeah. and raised. Just raised. Um, How'd that go? Yeah, raised. I was born in LA and when I was three, I moved okay. to New York. I moved I moved to Harlem. My whole family's from Harlem though. Mm -hmm. They basically kinda like moved there to have me and then moved right back. <laughs> moved to Cali? Yeah. Um they only lived there for like a couple years and then came right back. So mm -hmm. I'm the only person in my family that was born somewhere else. But I was raised in Harlem. Okay. Um, yeah. So what was that like? What was being raised in Harlem like? Um, well, at first, when I first moved from LA, I was like really, really young. Mm -hmm. So it was a little bit of a culture shock. Um, at three years old? It was really young, but like I just, my first memory is being like, oh, I'm going home soon. Like, I won't be here for long. <laughs> you know, just being like little, but. Um, it was it was it was great. This is home. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like um, Harlem is home. It's like family everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody knows me in like my community, my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, it's where I feel like the safest. And like it's like, you know, mm -hmm. it's just home. So that's how it was growing up. I always felt like I had like the freedom to like say what I wanted and do mm -hmm. what I wanted, dress how I wanted, because, you know, where I grew up, like, everybody's kind of just so outspoken and, like, the way they dress or, like, do their hair or whatever, like, mm -hmm. you know, so it kind of gave me that backbone. Okay, so like, do you think you would stay in New York or would you, like, consider moving, whether it's back to Cali, somewhere else? Um, I hate Cali, so Ooh. I don't think okay. I would ever move to That's Cali. That's Why do you hate Cali, sis? It's just not my vibe. It's, okay. I don't really like Cali. Um... I think I want to be I want to be tri coastal. So like I I want a house in like every okay, state so that I like um, go to. Like I want a house in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I want to keep my place in New York and then um, probably I guess get a place in LA just for work purposes. Right, because like, that's really like I yeah. feel like New York and LA specifically are mm -hmm. like the two places, especially for the industry. Well, mm -hmm. if you want to stay in your acting bag, especially yeah, yeah exactly. where like a lot of things happen. So that would definitely make sense. Mm -hmm. So just overall, how have things been lately? You just hit us with a new, um, a new little snippet. Mm -hmm. I heard the detrimental hey, impression. Okay. I said, Whoa. <laughs> doing it so like how have things been going you working on your music what you been up to yes um things have been going great um I'm, I'm working on my ep right now okay um and then also working on the album loading up the next single mm -hmm. it's just like a lot of music it's a lot going on but we're trying to like organize it right and yeah i'm just really excited i feel like this is like a different side of me because i've been i've been releasing music since i was like 17 16 mm. so mm -hmm. it's been a couple years and i feel like this new set of music is like different like even bad decisions mm -hmm. um it was like me cursing more and like me really talking how i wasn't before yeah but you know what i think that also comes with you growing up because exactly. you're yeah. you're still not to age myself, but you are still kind of young. Yeah. So I think that, you know, as you grow up, you're starting to find your sound and mm -hmm. find what works and you're maturing. So yeah. it, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. And even outside of the music, because we're going to definitely get to that. But mm -hmm. you were at New York Fashion Week. You were with the yeah. girls, Jada, yeah. Zest, Flo. I was like, OK, yeah. how was that experience? Um, it was really cool. Um, Flo Millie and Omaretta, we've been following each other like mutuals for a while. Mm -hmm. So it was cool to like actually link up with them. Because mm -hmm. um, especially Flo Millie, like we've been pa like passing each other. We'll be at the same parties and be like, you were there, I was there. And like not being able to like actually link up. So when I saw her backstage, we all just like 
um, got together, took a picture. She introduced me to um, Jada and Des mm-hmm. and them. And it was cool. It was a vibe. Um, I love that. Yeah. It, it looked like fun. y'all had a good time. Yeah. And yeah, I love when the girls are. Yeah. <laughs> when the girls acting right. Yeah. I love that. Mm-hmm. So that's really, really, really dope. Um, so, like, what was that like? Was that your first New York Fashion Week? Yeah, it was. It okay. Was. Yeah. Did you like it? What did you What did you leave with? Oh, my gosh. It was it was so intense. Like, yeah, when I, I tell you, like, five events at least a day, like, because there was so much going on. Like, there mm-hmm. was somebody f- found this, like, list, and it was, like, five pages, like, with, like, a hundred events on each each page for, like, oh, the whole yeah, week. No, that's too much. And it was just really intense like that. And then not even including, like, the last minute, like, you know, mm-hmm. just put together real fast stuff. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, it was just really intense mm-hmm. and, like, I was exhausted and like, you know, I was getting, I was waking up at 8 a.m. every day, like hair, makeup, then we had to do the clothes mm-hmm. and like, we going straight to an event. Well, that's it the life. And I, I I know it was crazy, but I love that for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, you put the looks together, you give Thank me fashion you. girly, like, how would you describe your style overall though? Um, I don't know. I always, I always change my answer every time I get asked this. I guess maybe like. I'm I'm not emo, even though like some people say that that's what I give sometimes. Mm-hmm. But like I feel like it's definitely like streetwear. Mm-hmm. I don't know, Dolls Kill, but like Aaliyah vibes. I don't so know. It's I like, hear a lot of different things. Maybe it's like a emo meets Harlem girl. Yeah, because you got the fitted on, but you also got the baggy pants. Like I don't yeah, know. and then the like, docks and the dock. Yeah, I, I, don't I don't know. It's something, <laughs> but it's working. <laughs> And then, of course, I have to ask you about the pink skunk stripe, because Mm -hmm. at this point, it's like become a part of your image. I feel like no matter what style you have, it's always there. Is that something Mm -hmm. that's like significant to you? Is there a reason why you keep it? Um, Well, when I got my heart broken, I wanted to cut my hair off, Mm -hmm. but I didn't do that. So I got some dye and some bleach and I did a piece of my hair pink. And I was just like, I think it was really me just... I wanted to, like, you know, like, you want to change your hair. That's Mm -hmm. the first thing you want to do. You want to, like, do something and not be identified with, like, the person who was hurt or, like, that hurt side of you. So Mm -hmm. um, it was kind of how I expressed that, like, me kind of just being, like, I'm not this soft pushover, like, you know, because I'm a sweetheart. I'm a teddy bear. Mm -hmm. You know, it's obvious. But (laughs) I kind of was just, like, over it, like. I'm going to have a pink stripe in my hair. And I think it was the last thing that a lot of people expected me to do because mm-hmm. I've always been so, like, you know. And then it was a part of me kind of finding, like, my aesthetic and, like, you know, going outside of the box. Because it's always, it's always been, like, flowers and, like, right. all white so and, like, like I'm pretty. Different. And it's just, like, shake the girls up yeah, a little bit. you know. I love mm-hmm. it. And then I dropped Bad Girl right after. So it was, like, Which yeah. Which also a bop. Yeah, <laughs> and we're gonna Thank get you. into that too because there's a little tea <laughs> with that, but mm. we're gonna get into that. Okay. Um, but how important do you think image is to an artist? Because I feel like now, um, when we see artists, everybody kind of has something that gravitates people towards them, whether it's the way that they dress or the way they do their hair, their mm-hmm. style overall. What do you how important do you think that is? Um, I feel like it's important. Because, like, you look at, like, the biggest icons, like, fashion is a key player in, like, how people identify with them. So Mm -hmm. I definitely think your image is really, really important because at the end of the day, people are looking at you. And that's the whole point. Like, you know, like, Mm -hmm. you're in public eye and, you know, the center of attention. So I definitely think it's important. And I do think it's important to, like, make it authentic and, like, true Mm. to yourself. Because the last thing you want to do is, like, get caught up. And playing something that's not your, that's not you, mm. and that doesn't feel right because that's the worst. Like that's like putting on an outfit that doesn't fit, and it's just like like putting on clothes that's too big. Right. Well, I definitely agree with that, and I think that with you, I feel like it's authentic. It looks authentic. <laughs> you give what yeah. needs to be gave. Um. So let's hop into the music a little bit. Mm. So tell me, how did that start? How did when did you first start? Um, making music. I know you said you started dropping music at 17, mm-hmm. but when did you first start getting into music? Um, well, my parents are both in the music industry, mm. so I grew up, you know, around very like greats. Um, that was kind of my first impression on music, like being in the studio with like Neo and Jordan Sparks, and like being a little little girl mm-hmm. and seeing them in their creative process. So that played like a key role in like 
you know, how I thought of music and, like, how I knew from the beginning that it was a job and it mm-hmm. wasn't, like, a, you know, it's fun, but, like, it's it's a job and, like, it's a passion. So, I don't know, I probably, when I, I've been doing singing videos and, like, covers since I was, like, nine, mm-hmm. eight on mm-hmm. Instagram or whatever. And um, I recorded my first song when I was 11. Um, it was what terrible. Was it oh, my gosh. What was it called? It was called Dirty Little Secret. It was all American, did all American rejects yeah. inspire that? <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> did but, they? But yeah, I it was terrible. I left the studio crying because <laughs> it was so bad. But <sighs> but it was okay though because like it was my first time doing Do it. Do you ever so. listen like back on it? I feel oh like oh my gosh, no. I I think I listened to it. I still have it in my phone, but I listened to it a couple months ago, and it's it's terrible. It's terrible. And at the time, I thought it was, like, a banger. I was, like, I left the studio crying, but the next day, I played it for my best friend. I was, like, yo, I just made a hit. Like, listen to this. She was, like, girl, that is not good. I was, like, you know what? You're crazy. I was, like, you're crazy. Like, you lost your mind. Hold on. Because I just want to shout out your friend. Friend, (laughs) if you're watching, I don't know if y'all still friends now. But, friend, if you're watching... You were a real one for that. Because I feel like even now, and that was at nine. That was um, when I was 11. Okay, at mm-hmm. 11. I feel like even now, as grown-ass adults, mm-hmm. friends don't tell their friends when their music is trash. <laughs> so as an 11-year-old, I think mm-hmm. that's very admirable that she let you know. And yeah. I'm sure that that helped build your character. Because now, yeah. you put a music out, and honestly, when I listen to you, it's no skips. Oh, thank so, you. So, I think that says a lot about <laughs> where you were versus where you are now. Yeah. So, as you were coming up, I know you said you were around a lot of the greats. Did you mm-hmm. feel like that added to the pressure of the music that you put out at all? Um, no, not really. I think I just see it, um, I see the music business just growing up in it. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm a industry child, me and my sisters. And, you know, I grew up around other industry children. And, you know, all of us, a, a lot of industry children don't do music and like kind of go very far away from it because they grew up you know around it um Mm -hmm. so I think it just kind of made it real like more real and less of like a fantasy Mm -hmm. um you know and so I just understand that it has like I understand the reality of it like the real high moments and the real low moments and like the real in-betweens and like because you were watching it in real time yeah you know so it I don't think that it added pressure I just think that it showed like how real it is like You know, there are artists that are not the biggest artists in the world, but they make a living Mm -hmm. and they're successful and they take care of their family. And, Mm -hmm. you know, they're, you know, you can be successful and not be the number one artist in the world. Of course, I'm going to be the number one artist in the world. But, you know, it just showed me that it's like a real, it's just a career. Like, it's a real career. And, like, you know, some people think that if you're going to be an artist, like, the only option is to just be in this fantasy of it, you know? So I just, I think that if anything, it just made it more real and like up close and like, okay. I understood the reality. So do you have any memory? Cause it sounds like it really shaped you and helped you mm-hmm. grow into the artist you are now. So do you have any like specific stories or memories with anybody that still stick with you as an artist today? Um, uh, the princess and the frog premiere, mm-hmm. um, Neo, I was his date. <laughs> Oh when God, I was like, so when I was like, um, seven, how was it? Five, six, seven, eight. I was eight. Okay. <laughs> she just, my mom told me. Um, yeah, when I was eight, I was Neil's date to the Princess and the Frog premiere. And I remember I threw a fit because I was like in the, the you know, the limo with him mm-hmm. and I wasn't with my mom. And I was like, where's my mom? I was like, I want to be with my mom. And they were like, you're with Neil on the red carpet. I'm like, okay, where's my mom? My mom. <laughs> <laughs> so that's probably one of my um like my first memories like you know back in the day shout out to but. neo because he walked on never knew i needed for Princess yeah and Frog. yeah he did he did what needed to be done so that was so that was so dope yeah, wow. yeah okay yeah. so who were you listening to um growing up you were around all these people were you mm-hmm. listening to the people you were around or did you have your own preference of music um yeah I, of course like that was the before i really understood like famous artists mm-hmm. the first artists that I listened to were like the artists that my parents were working with or my mom was working with and so yeah that was like my first impression but like when I really branched out and like looked into music mm-hmm. um Drake was the first one of the one of the first um Etta James Whitney okay, Michael Tony Braxton I don't know Brandy Beyonce of course mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um and then and then like you know as I got into like my 
teenage preteen years, like Taylor Swift was like. You know what's so funny? I was about to say, you kind of give me Z100. Really? <laughs> I don't know if Z100, because what year were you reborn? <laughs> Sorry. Because before I go any further, I really just want to, I don't want to age myself again. Um, O2. I'm an O2 baby. Yeah. Were you listening to Were you listening to, to the radio Z100? No. Um, yeah. Okay. A bit. You give me that because I was a Z100 girl okay. growing up too. <laughs> so yeah, it's definitely listen to the Paramore, the Taylor Swift, mm-hmm. all of those. So that's dope. Yeah. Do you feel like the music that you listen to helped shape you as an artist? Though, like, did it have any influence on the music that you make now? Um. Yeah, for sure. Like, I, I noticed that a lot of the music that I started listening to. Like, at first, was always, like, stories and, like, storytelling. Like, I remember Taylor Swift, um, what is it, Love Story? or mm-hmm. lo- lo- Yeah, Love story, and she yeah. was, like, telling, like, the story of, like, Romeo and Juliet or mm-hmm. whatever. Or even, like, You Belong With Me, like, Bruno Mars and, and his, you know, first few singles. It was just very much, like, story-driven, like, Grenade. And I really paid attention to lyrics because mm-hmm. I write all of my music. Mm-hmm. So it's, like, lyrics, lyricism is very, like, um, you know key to me and my music style mm-hmm. even like drake mm-hmm. i um straight to him so much because he has such a distinct style even if he has you know people coming in writing for him or whatever it's very much like his style and he started that first like you know nobody mm-hmm. gave that to him mm-hmm. so i just you know even SZA, she's one of my favorites okay. because she just has such a distinct writing style right and i just so just you've mentioned writing style a lot mm-hmm. How would you describe your writing style? You write your own music, you mm-hmm. do your own thing. How would you describe that? Um, definitely storytelling, mm-hmm. because you know, like I said, that's just I, that's really important to mm-hmm. me. Um, I keep it very personal, um, almost like diary entries. Mm-hmm. I've been told, and I feel like that. Um, I've, I've written in diaries my whole life. I'm like a diary girl. Um, okay, but yeah, so I kind of just treat my songs like that. Also, like it's very much how I'm feeling like I just recently one of my friends one of my closest friends passed away and I immediately went to the studio and like wrote a song just like about us like about everything and it was like a story like you know me telling a story and like because that's really essentially what journal entries diaries are like you know you're telling like a story like how did your day go or whatever Mm -hmm. like it's storytelling so I feel like storytelling and like emotions and like you know I keep it very like close Close to home yeah so building off what you just said, I'm sorry for your loss. Is okay, there um like a boundary between the stuff that you're willing to put on a track and the stuff that you just leave for your journal? Girl, no. It's okay. terrible. It's so <laughs> Not terrible. It's terrible. I got sorry. I, I remember I was in the stu- oh gosh, I'm saying what? this. I was in the studio uh-huh. with a guy that I was talking to. And he was pissing me off. And I literally had him in the booth. I was sitting on his lap recording. And I was talking about how he was pissing me off and how I called another guy the day before. And I literally was, like, saying names and everything. And I was like, not you name dropping. Yeah, and he was in the booth with me. But you know guys are dumb. And so he didn't, I didn't even oh, think he, he didn't catch it. on. Maybe he did. Because, like, I'm- after I finished the song, he was like, send me that. And I was like, yeah, because he was yeah. about to put them, <laughs> them AirPods in and analyze them lyrics. But, like, no, it's it's terrible. But I think that... You know, it is what it is. Like this is my passion, and I, it's, it's, it's what I enjoy to do. Like I like to express myself. Mm-hmm. I overshare a little bit sometimes. I have a habit, but I feel like that's the point. Like it's a, this is a vulnerable industry. Mm-hmm. Um, you're saying your thoughts. Like even with with guys and they're rapping. Like most of the time they're talking about some things that they probably wouldn't say in a regular conversation. So, you know, yeah, yeah. That's I what was it is. wondering if like if your songs come from your personal experiences or if it's just like you're just so relatable that you know like what the girls are going through because there were a few things that you said in your music you talked on daddy issues you mm-hmm. talked on because that's one of my favorite songs you talked on daddy issues you talked about fucking with a bitch that's not anything mm-hmm. close to you you talked about like so many different things that i just wonder is that things that you personally went through or yeah 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 it's so crazy because like even when i was like um 12 like just starting out making music the first thing people notice they're like what have you been through child like you're like 12 (laughs) and you're talking about this nigga lost his mind yeah it's just like very much and it's always like you know adult women like when i was um 
like 12, 13, I was writing, like ghost writing for a lot of, you know, older women artists. Mm. And oh, wow. they were like requesting me to come in. And I was always like, you want me? But it was just like, you know, I kind of just, I've been through it on the low. But, <laughs> you know, I, I can pull from real experience. And, you know, and I also grew up in a all woman household. So I have, I have three older sisters and then my mom and my grandma is just a lot of women around mm-hmm. me. So I was always around like emotion and like, you know, women can be emotional, especially when it's a house full of women. So like, I'm very in tune with like my emotions and like, I feel things like mm-hmm. a high. So level. how do you manage the times that you go out and you present yourself as if, you know, everything is great. Mm-hmm when you're really going through all the stuff that you're going through, like emotionally, what do you, what coping mechanisms do you use when you're out in public? Well, um, I've had a very strong mother. Um, so she's taught me to just like keep it cute. I think, you know, it's like I said, it's an all woman household. So me and my sisters, we all kind of instilled like, you know, values in each other that we all carry. And I'm the youngest. So I feel like I kind of have learned the most from everybody. And Mm -hmm. I think what we all have in common is that we all just keep it cute. Like, that's kind of what I say all the time. Like, that's like my, you know, motto. Like, I'll be like, keep it cute. Keep it cute. I'm going to keep it cute. Mm -hmm. You know, if I got to take a break or um, remove myself for a second, like I will. Like, I'm not in a rush. I'll take my time. Um, You know, so that's kind of like my thing, like keep it cute. And I got it from my mother. So, okay. And how would you say you manage your work life balance? Do you feel like you have a good gauge on (laughs) how, like, when to move forward, when to take a step back? Um, Well, when it comes to like boundaries, I mean, my (laughs) right now, I'm kind of just putting my head down with it. I don't really have much boundaries when it comes to like work and personal life. It's Mm -hmm. all just like my life. Um, but I feel like that is something that I want to like really dive into where it's like, I'm working, I'm not working, but like right now I'm always working. So always working, all work, no play. Okay. Okay. And you know, you've been (laughs) dropping the singles, like I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that you really don't put out that many projects. You put Mm -hmm. out a lot of singles. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Like, is that a conscious decision or are you saving up for something? Um, yeah, yeah, I'm very, I'm, I feel like when it comes to the album, I'm going to be very, you know, hands, like, get my hands really dirty with it, and, like, um, I want it, <laughs> I want it to be cohesive, so, mm. um, I'm very particular about the project, but the project is coming, honey, and it's, you know, when I do it, I want it to hit hard, mm-hmm. and, um, we kind of just been loading up right now. Um, I kind of want to just present my best, like put my best foot forward. And I feel like with the singles, I've been, I've just been trying to get, find my audience and find my okay. girls and like find my fan base. And, you know, when I get everybody mm-hmm. paying attention like they need to, then it's like, That's here you guys. It's like the dessert, you know? This is like the okay. main courses, and then y'all get the dessert. I don't know. It's not giving it. main courses. It's <laughs> giving appetizer. Appetizers, I feel okay, like okay. I feel like the girls want more yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. It's definitely, okay, that's better. It's yeah, giving appetizers. appetizer, mm-hmm, and then sure. I feel like the project will give main course, yeah. and then whatever you decide to do after that will give the dessert. Yeah, like, I okay, showed y'all okay. what was on the table. Now, here's a little extra. Yeah. Um, and I really like what you did recently with engaging what I felt like engaged your followers. You did like the three word, 10 minute song challenge on TikTok. Mm -hmm. And then you came out with a Bob. Well, you sampled, uh, (laughs) you put out a snippet, take two Mm -hmm. of a Bob rich girl. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, you really did that. You pushed (laughs) your pen. And I feel like a lot of people really like that. Thank do you, you feel like that's something that you're going to do more often, like with engaging your followers in the music that you make? Um, yeah, I do it from time to time. Mm-hmm. Like I had another video that I did like two years ago, mm-hmm. pre, pre Pretty. Skunk Stripe. Um, oh. It was like me doing Save a Bro, this other song that I had put out and I like wrote it. It wasn't in 10 minutes, but I like mm-hmm. wrote it and like um, did it on camera and stuff. But I, yeah, people really liked it. I was like, I was a little surprised because I was like, let me just try this out like I feel like I could body this real quick so Mm -hmm. I was like let me try this out but I was thinking about I was thinking about doing it again I feel like it's on the way I just gotta make some time because 
you know, content. You sound like you're booked and busy, sis. <laughs> so speaking of singles, of course, we know you have bad decisions out. Mm-hmm. And I want to play a little game with you. Okay. So <laughs> I'm going to list off a few things. And you tell me if you feel like they're bad decisions or if you feel like they're okay. Okay. All right. So tipping someone who provides a service but does a bad job. That's a good decision. That's a, that's a good, good decision. Yeah, that's a good decision. I, you have posted a video. You got a pony. Oh. And you were like, my hair looks so oh bad. Like, gosh. look at what she did to me. And I was watching it like, you know, I've definitely had experiences like that. But I'm mm-hmm. the type to, like, not like it and still tip. Yeah. And... <laughs> <laughs> Some people, you know, they they, get, they they don't really feel like it. They, they was get, tearing me up with that because you left the chair. Oh my gosh, there was it made it was on the shade room. Was it? Was, it? Yes, they was tearing me up. It was, and it was so crazy because I tipped her, but I didn't. Mm-hmm. I didn't see my hair. She let me leave like that. I didn't see my hair. I was walking around. I went to Starbucks. No. I went to go get food. I was with my manager in the car. I was like, you like my hair? He was like, yeah. Yeah, it's great. And I was like, okay. And then, like, I had touched it. And I was like, hold on. And then I went upstairs. And then that was when I made the video. Like, as Mm -hmm. soon as I, because I couldn't see the back of my head. But I was just like. Manager still your manager? No. Oh. (laughs) Because he didn't have your best interest at heart. I'm sorry, sis. Oh, my gosh. It was not given, but I definitely can relate because there have been times I've walked out of the chair and was like, oh, I hate this shit. And I just didn't say anything. She got me. Okay. Um, Talking to somebody and then talking to their friend after. (laughs) What's the wrong person? What's he? Talking to somebody and then talking to their friend. Mm-hmm. There's no wrong answers. I feel like do what you gotta do. Good decision. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, well, no, if you're a girl, if you're a guy, that's a bad decision. Don't even think about it. As much as we <laughs> hate double standards, I'm gonna stand oh, by no, it. Oh no, I'm a double standard baby, okay? I'm gonna stand by it. You say you a double standard baby? Yes. Because w- women deserve it. I honestly feel that I'm I'm like a what do I what do I say um what is it like a super feminist like a okay. like a intense feminist like a extreme feminist that's what I am okay and I just feel like you know women we birth the babies mm-hmm. we got cycles we got high high hormones we got to do our hair all the time our makeup our nails. It's just a lot and more. Men just have to be there. It's just a <laughs> lot more I for agree. us. Like, we have to put a lot more energy into life, mm-hmm. in my opinion. So, we deserve double standards, if anybody. Like, you know, like, mm-hmm. if anybody. That's just I mean, thing. I'm with the double standards on certain things. <laughs> I feel like, don't expect me to cut. I'm a cooker. I cook. But don't yeah. expect me to cook and do all the stuff around the house if you can't build anything. You're not doing anything as a man. Don't, that, that's, that's where I feel like the double standards come into play. But yeah. when, And when it comes to the friends, don't talk to my friend. Yeah. Well, okay. We can get into that off camera, though. <laughs> that just hit a nerve for me. Um, not admitting to having a ghostwriter. Not admitting to having a ghostwriter. I would say bad decision because... Only because, like, nobody really cares. And, like, how I think about it is if somebody cares, then, like, you shouldn't care that they care because they shouldn't care. Like, cause, because, like, I heard Chris Brown. He had the whole thing about um, ghostwriters and and um, how people will give him crap about, like, not writing his songs or whatever. And he's like, well, nobody's going to sing it like me. Like, they're not going to have my face or my energy behind it. And it's not going to be the same. Like if somebody else were to do it, like they're not going to have me on the song. So like, I feel like it's just subjective and like Mm -hmm. people could do whatever they want. Like so many successful artists that have never written a song in their life. And like, yeah, but I felt like the artists that we know don't write their songs. People make a point of pointing it out that they don't make their songs, but people are going to pick at anything. That's very true. You know, like they're going to find something. So you think that it's a bad decision to not admit that you have a ghostwriter. Yeah. So you should that's something so do you feel like it's something you should be upfront about or if it's like if people find out, don't deny it. Cause there's a difference. You know what? At the end of the day, the top in the last ten years, mm-hmm. not even, in the last twenty years, there have been no number one records wit- written by one person. 
Oh, that's tea. It's, I didn't know that. It's, it's, it's not a thing. Like, you can't, you can't be the, the biggest artist in the world or be super... Mm-hmm. Um, super mainstream successful and not collaborate like mm-hmm. it's just it just doesn't work mm-hmm. like to reach everybody you have to have like people have to put their heads together so collaboration is a part of yeah it's a necessity industry. so like so I wonder why it translates so weird in today's today's times I feel like people make a very big deal out of ghostwriting and not pushing your own pen yeah. when if in all reality based on what you just said mm-hmm. it's something that everybody's doing yeah and like coming from a person i haven't i haven't used writers since like my first three studio sessions and i hated them Mm. so this is coming from somebody who doesn't use writers Mm -hmm. but like i understand that like if you want to hit like a worldwide hit you're probably gonna have to bring in some people to put your head together and it doesn't take away from your talent i feel like it's really just ego when people get into stuff like that Mm -hmm. like it almost brings brings me back to like the people who are like i did this by myself like Mm -hmm. it's like just for to come up story. Like, for like, what? It's okay like, to have people help you. know, you. and then, like, it's just like, okay, well, you went two steps by yourself mm-hmm. when you could have collaborated and went Five, 30 or right. whatever. Well, you know what yeah, I mean? You think yeah, it's big. 30. I'm thinking you big. You think it's big. It's just As like, you, you like, oh, I did two I did two steps by myself. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay. Mm-hmm. Or like, Not to take away from those who actually push their pen by themselves. Yeah. I still think that that's exactly. very admirable, too. Yeah. And, someone who can really I, sit in a And I really am... You know, I really appreciate good lyrics and mm-hmm. writing. Like it's a, it's one of my, it's probably one of my main passions. Like mm-hmm. I really enjoy songwriting. That's like a key for me. And it's just like, but putting putting your head together with somebody else doesn't take away from your talent. So like right. that's just how I feel about that. Okay, dating yeah. in the industry. Oh, um, bad decision. Period. It's a bad decision. <laughs> we can get no. into it. No. Dating online. Uh, and this includes Insta. Like Instagram and TikTok. TikTok. And stuff. Yep. <laughs> um, do you mean like like you never see each other, like just like for a long period of time, or like you just meet online? Um, talking phase online, but eventually you meet. That's a bad decision. Bad decision? Bad decision. I feel like in today, like today, for me, I feel like I I just know that when I tell my kids <laughs> how I met your father, <laughs> he slid in my DMs. Yeah. I terrible. just, like, I, of course, it's better when you meet somebody in person. But mm-hmm. I feel like in the times we're living in now, social media is running basically all conversations. And I feel like that's why, why society, like, the love conversation is just in shambles like everybody Mm -hmm. is in shambles i feel like in this new generation when it comes to love because it's it's not the same i've never dated anybody that i met online Mm -hmm. i just like everybody that i've dated i've seen them online maybe and it's like okay and then i meet them in person or like you know i'll meet them in person and then they'll become like a uh option so like yeah i don't i don't really that's just a little scary because like you have no idea like, I mean, you also outside. I think that's also coming from a perspective of someone who, well, I'm making an assumption here. Because mm-hmm. I see you outside. Mm-hmm. So I feel like you cross more paths with people than those who, like, may be home more and don't get out to meet those people outside. I mean, I just think of it like you meet somebody at your job, you know, if anything. Like, because unfortunately, I have a, a history with dating people that are also in the industry. Mm. So <laughs> it's just like meeting somebody at my job, like, um, I met one of my exes, like, we had a collab, like, my A&R knew his management, and they were like, oh, let, let them do a song together, and then mm-hmm. we met in the studio, but it's just like, you know, we're in the same industry, like, it's just like, if you're a lawyer, you meet another lawyer through, like, lawyer stuff, mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> through lawyer stuff is mad funny, but you're still saying bad decision. Bad decision, it's a no absolutely. You. Okay. Really no. Accepting gifts and money from someone who you don't like. Um, that's a good decision. Okay. Do you feel like that leads the person on or do you make it very clear? Like, I don't like you, but you could still. Well, if they're offering, like if you're, as long as you're not like, send me some money and like, you're like, I don't like him. But like, if they're Mm -hmm. like, can I send you some money? Can I send you some food? Like, okay. Who am I to say? Like, you know, like, okay. Because it's like, you're not entitled to anything. Okay. Unless you think it's transactional. Go on the police. (laughs) <laughs> Sorry, because I feel like I was just cutting you off. <laughs> Going 50 50 on a date. Um, that's a good decision. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. I agree. First date First is date, absolutely not. No, absolutely not. Immediately, no. We are not about to go through Because it's just like, absolutely that's kind of setting not. the tone, you know, because it's only going to go downhill from that. You know what? I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Um, with one of my exes on our first date, I thought I was doing something by paying for like, so we went out to eat first and then we did an activity after. Mm-hmm. And I was Cute. like, you know what? I'll pay. Bad decision. Don't do that. Cause that sets the standard yeah. that you're willing to not dish out yeah. anything. No, mm-hmm. let the man provide for you until you feel ready. Okay. Don't try to prove a point for these things. Don't do it. No, I li- one time, um, I, I take that so serious. Like mm-hmm. with the first date, there was one time I was with a guy and I guess he didn't have it or something. Ooh. And he started pulling out quarters. Because I was like. No, he didn't. I'm not doing this. And what did you do? I left. Oh. Because <laughs> I feel like pulling out quarters is No, insane. it was crazy. And it was just like, um, we had went there. And I was like, do you got it? Like, do you want me to pay? And he was like, no, no, absolutely not. Like, I got it. I got it. Like, what you mean? Like, no, you're not paying for nothing. And I was and like, okay. The change. And then they, like, told him how much it cost. And he was like, okay. And then, like, he's, like, struggling. He's looking at me. I'm like, you told me I ain't got to worry about it. So he started pulling out change and shit. And I was like, um, no. See, I actually got to go. Like, I'd rather gonna, for you go in the bathroom and phone a friend before you pull out quarters yeah. on this table. That is OD. Yeah. <laughs> that is OD. So you left. Did you talk to him again? Um, No, I did not. Okay, good. Yeah, I, I did it. He... Right, yeah, but that was a, <laughs> good decision. I, exactly. I'm telling you, I've lived so many lives. It's crazy. Oh yeah. my gosh! So okay, though. splitting the bill at a birthday dinner. Wait, what? <laughs> splitting the bill at a birthday dinner is that a good decision or a bad decision? Like with the person whose birthday it is? No, like you go out with a group of eight to somebody's birthday dinner, and y'all splitting the bill. Let's say you order a salad and a and a lemon drop. And they order a steak, lobster, all of that, Mm. and they like, let's split the bill. What you doing, sis? See, I'm the type, I'm going to be honest, when I'm with my friends, I'll just be like, I got it. But, Mm -hmm. so, but like how I feel about birthday dinners, there needs to be a designated person that's paying for the whole meal, in my opinion. That is very interesting. That's how I feel about it. Like, whether it be like the boyfriend, he paying for the whole, for the whole thing. Uh Uh-huh. Or like, and if it's like really, really expensive, then people could like pay for their own meals. That's how I feel like it should be. Like, we do the math. Okay. You pay for your meal. You pay, how much did you get? Like, it should be like, you pay for, either you're paying for what you got specifically. Mm Mm-hmm. Or somebody's paying for the whole thing. Okay, so I definitely feel like the somebody paying for the whole thing is a conversation that's outside of my tax bracket right now. <laughs> because, but like a boyfriend or like I, something, but or like a dad or like a parent, like somebody pay for the whole thing. I don't know about the boy. Like, would it be nice for like my boyfriend to pay for the whole dinner? Yes, mm-hmm. but would I expect for him to? No, no, I don't think that it's an expectation. But like, that's just how I feel like things. Like, if mm-hmm. that's, if that's why it's two options. It's either somebody's paying for the or whole everybody thing pay for what or they got. everybody pay for what they got. So, like... And include yeah. tip and tax because people don't be doing that. And that yeah. blows my too. But I think there definitely should be, like, a designated person that's, mm-hmm. like, if anything, they're getting the fallback. Okay. Um, getting someone's name tatted. That's a good decision if you're getting mine tatted. I have a couple exes that got my name tatted. A couple? I love that for them. Do you still... <laughs> I absolutely love that. A couple. I got a birthday. I got initials. Not me. Wait. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Yeah, yeah. Somebody somebody has my birthday. Somebody has my initials. Somebody just has my name. When's your birthday? Um, November 13th. Scorpio. Scorpio. Can you tell? (laughs) Oh, our astrology girl is right over there. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure she probably picked up on it. She can tell you your rising and all of that, too. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay, so... Oh, tat is, but you would never tat anybody's no, name. No. Is it a never or just you haven't met the right person yet? Um, I had a little initials, but I covered that up. Impulsive things. Mm. How long were y'all together before you put the initials on you, sis? <laughs> Mom over there laughing. What is T? <laughs> it was actually the same day that I met him. No. Get- <laughs> Can you tell I'm a Scorpio? Why would you do that? What was it about him that made you feel like... It wasn't necessarily about him. I just, like, have this thing where I just really like when, like, guys are, like, obsessed with me. And, like, I could just... Like, I said it, and he was just like, what? I was like, yeah, I'll do it. 
And then he got his and I got mine. And I was like, <laughs> and then I got it covered up. So, yeah. That is so, I don't think I've ever heard anybody say that. Before. Yeah, it just was like, I, I don't know. know. I like good vibes. Like, it was like good vibes. And I was like, yeah. I, I just, I feel like I'm so traumatized from men that I just wouldn't even want to give a man the opportunity of saying that I got his initials tatted on me the first date. Because that just gives <laughs> but, him too much power. But you know what? I don't think it does, though, because, like, I have my power. And, like, mm -hmm. I, I'm the one that ended up cutting him off. So, like, I didn't really think too much about it. Like, it was just like, eh. So, you like spontaneous stuff. Yeah, like, it was just, like, spontaneous. Like, I felt like I wouldn't have I wouldn't have not done it. Like, I probably would still do it if mm -hmm. I went back. Like, it was just, like, whatever. Like, vibes. Okay, maybe I need to live a little. And more. it was so funny because we were in. Yeah, it was basically like a YOLO. Mm -hmm. And we were in the tattoo shop. And the girl that was tattooing me, I think she didn't know what i was doing at first and she was just like yeah like she was just having an outside conversation with like a different girl and she was like yeah i have like seven guys tatted on me they eat that shit up they eat that shit up wait <laughs> wait she has seven guys tatted on but like her? but like you know like something like like a tattoo for him or like a birthday a or something. she was just like an initial yeah she was just like they eat that shit up like they eat that shit up like he bought me a car after like they eat that shit up like got him because they be feeling like they feeling themselves because you the but like bro, really like how were you niggas? But really, like, now they're sweating you more because, like, they think you're, like, in love with them. Like, he was just like, you're, you're gonna, I'm going to marry you now. I was like, yeah, okay. That is very interesting. Wow. Oh, I know. It's All right. Terrible. Um, Going through your partner's phone. That's a good decision. Whew. Because, like, mm. but, like, the thing is. If you if they feel like you shouldn't be going through their phone, then they're doing something they're not supposed to be doing. No, it's only bad if they're doing something they're not supposed to be doing. Like it shouldn't be a thing. Like it shouldn't be that deep. Like I my sister. I don't want to know if you're playing me. <laughs> keep, keep it, it, on, it the on the low. I don't want to yeah. see it. I'm not you say go that looking for it until it finds you and you like. Damn, I wish I knew this six months ago. Yeah, but I feel like if you go looking for something, you're going to find it. Like, I really believe, like, if something is meant to be found, you're going to find it. There hasn't been any situation where I felt like my intuition was telling me one thing and I never got to the bottom of what it was. I haven't yeah. had to go through. I went through a phone one time and I learned my lesson from there. And I could have saw the red flags in advance. So, I don't know. The, the going through phone thing. I don't know, though, because, like, I, I just feel like it's all about, like, my... Number one thing in, like, relationships is just, like, let me know what the fuck is going on. Mm -hmm. You know, like, if you want to... Because there's different types of relationships. That's why people have, like, open relationships or, like, poly relationships or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. you know, there's so many different options, especially it's 2022. Like, everybody's human at the end of the day. And I feel like relationships are really just about, like, partnership, like, and having, like, companionship. Like, it shouldn't always... Like, it should be more about the person than, like, what they're doing. And, like, what I don't like in general, like, with friends, my sisters, whatever, don't, like, I don't like lying and, like, mm -hmm. sneaky stuff because that's just, like, a character thing. Like, you don't respect me. Right. You know, so. So. Like, so. It shouldn't you, be nothing that's shocking me in the phone. So, you asking to go through the phone or you just going through it? I shouldn't have to ask. Like, I, I, if anything, it's just, like, give so, me your phone. Like, I, I, but I, are you doing that because you feel suspicious about something or are you doing it just to do a little weekly check-in okay the way i am <laughs> the way i am when i have a partner i'm using their phone like it's mine so huh. if i'm like let me see your phone let me log into my instagram or like let me see your phone let me check something real quick or like give me your phone like it should be like that like my sisters i know my sister's passcode to their phone yeah, like if i need to use my sister's okay. phone like i'm gonna use it like who like my it, it shouldn't be it's just silly. Like if mm -hmm. that's your com if that's your partner, like it should just be like a mutual understanding. Transparency is like transparency. Is like I completely thing. agree with you in theory, but the <laughs> reality theory. is just but like, like I'm not gonna look for something. It's just like mm -hmm. if I feel like you might be doing something, I'm gonna look. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna just check. Mm -hmm. But like I'm not gonna be like always looking through your phone. Like that's just okay. That's too much. Arguing on social media. Oh, bad decision. Get it together. Keep it cute. That's not keep it cute. Keep That's it cute. the I, if we had an episode name, it would be keep it cute. Yeah, because how do you not. feel about the girls fighting on on um Twitter lately? Things are um, getting a little you know. Crazy. I have this is the only thing that I'll say about that because like 
I don't know these people, so, like, I don't really have much to say about it. Mm-hmm. But, like, you know, I feel like the rap girlies has always been so competitive. And, like, um, just, like, women in the industry has always been, like, competitive and, like, you know, only one of us can win. You know, back, you know, we're trying to grow from that. And that's been the thing where now it's a new movement of, like, women uplifting each other because we all know it's been so long where women have been put against each other and we've all been, like butting heads and like only one of us could be on top Mm -hmm. and with this now they're arguing and stuff a lot of that is being thrown in each other's faces like i i saw like Mm -hmm. somebody posted like somebody else giving them props like oh well you were sweating me and it's just like well she was like she was giving uh, you props like i don't feel like i don't (laughs) feel like that should be something that they throw back in their face Mm -hmm. because that's what we're trying to work against and now it's going to make it harder now it's just like two, like two steps forward, ten, ten steps exactly. back. Like right. now, it's making it harder for the next girls coming up to be like, "Oh, I'm a support women," because it's like, "Okay, well, what if we fall out? You're gonna throw that back in, in my, my face." face right. So, like, that's the only thing I feel about it, because it's just like I really want, because women have disagreements, people have disagreements. So, like, I'm not really gonna speak on that, but like, putting it in I, the public. Yeah, like I just I want us to continue this movement of like uplifting each other, because it just feels so good mm-hmm. to like know that other women are like supporting me like the love that i've been getting from the girls is what has been doing it for me like the girls that have been sliding in my dms like oh my gosh i listen to your music i'm like girl like i freaking love you Mm -hmm. and you're talking about you listen to my music and like that i'm one of your favorite artists right now like it's crazy so right i just want to keep that going like i just don't i don't want that to you know mess that up Mm -hmm. at all so transitioning out of the game and into what you just said i have even noticed from what you post on your social media that you around a lot of like the new york girlies i saw you with connie Mm -hmm. and even outside when it comes to like the guys you with fergie Mm -hmm. and um like how is it how is the support from the new york artists like are you feeling it yeah it's amazing and that's why we're all gonna win period and i just i'm so excited for it and we just had to like that's what i'm talking about i'm like i don't want nobody like we don't need no beef because mm-hmm. it's so much talent coming out of the city right now and we need each other to like lift each other up and, so yeah. so who are you listening to from the city um fergie baby of course period. connie you know lola brooke she's going crazy right mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. billy b she's really dope okay goddess who else? Vina Love, of course. Um, who else? Who else? Abby Jasmine is one of my faves. Okay, um, okay, okay. Yeah, we just did a song together, Shout actually. To so that's exciting. Um, Cash Cobain, Chow Lee. Yeah, it's, it's, so much, it's so much music coming out of the city right now. It's crazy. Right. But, yeah, it's some real heavy hitters. And you know what? Um, at Fergie's concert. Sorry, that's my one. We, can we cut this? Because I'm going to just turn it off. At Fergie's concert, you hopped on stage, and it, everybody was outside for that. Mm. Literally, everybody was outside for that. How do you feel, like, performing on stage and seeing, like, everybody from the city there? You got people singing your lyrics. <laughs> like, how does that feel to know that everybody really fucking with you like that? It's it's great. You know, it's great to be home. Like, I feel like I was everywhere else but home for a little while, and I kind of just had to, like, come back and, like, get centered. I was like, let me sit my ass down and just, like you know, really just get grounded and, like, show love so that I could get love back. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's just really nice. I've been working hard, and it's it's nice that, like, people are starting to notice because um, this has been years in the making. Like, this is not no, you know. Right. So if you had to pick five people that you would want to collab with. Now, let's make it three. If you had to pick three people you would want to collab with, who would you choose? Like, dead or alive or, like, just, like – um like since anyone. we're doing three i'm gonna say alive okay huh. um three people i want to collab with <laughs> um drake SZA, and i would say from the city cash cobain and charlie okay like they're that vibe i've okay. been thinking about it Okay, I like that. All right, so you are an RB girly, of course. And not too long ago, Diddy went viral for talking about how RB is dead. What were your thoughts on that? I feel like RB is not dead. I feel like maybe it's asleep. 
or like <laughs> like because i was just talking about this this is kind of how i feel about it like r&b in the past like 10 5 10 years like since like the 90s around that time or like the early 2000s it kind of just like turned into sleep music like it just got super super chill like r&b mm-hmm. got so chill out of nowhere like r&b wasn't chill like Destiny's Child, beyond like th- that's not chill R and B music. Like right. it's still like you Even can play it in the club. Mine, turn, right? Yeah, We're like bumping. it's like t- it still has some some energy to it. And it was just like it got so so chill. Like I, I remember I realized at one point like my sleep playlist was just all R and B music and only R and B music. And it's just like I feel like that's important to have that aspect because only R and B can do that. But like. Where's the life, you know? Yeah, because even with, like, like I was just saying, like, The Boy's Mind, mm-hmm. we don't have any, like, Brandy Monica mm-hmm. collab coming out right now. That yeah. Well, at least nothing that's given that same feeling that yeah. we have. But I don't know. I don't know if I would say R&B is dead. I just think the sound has evolved. Yeah. And even beyond being sleep music, I feel like there's still people, like, putting on. Yeah, I think that there's newer people. But, mm-hmm. like, when it comes to, like, mainstream, like, what has been breaking out in the past mm-hmm. has been, you know, it's been that shift. And, like, it kind of, like, of course, it was an evolution. And, like, now it's kind of, like, time to evolve the evolution like okay. a little bit and that's where i feel like i'm really trying to shake it up a little bit like i'm not making chill music um mm-hmm. and i feel like there's a lot of new r&b that's like you know it's definitely a change like it's a curve that's happening so i don't feel like it's dead at all i just feel like it's changed and it's still changing and it just it just needs a little a little bit a little more arm. you know like more than half needs to be more energy mm-hmm Okay, so like I said, we was going to get into the tea. Um, <laughs> you were in a relationship with someone who was in the industry. I don't know if we're doing names or not. We can <laughs> leave him nameless, no airtime. Um, but y'all, y'all were doing songs together, um, and I know it inspired bad decisions. Uh-huh. <laughs> did yeah. it? Yeah, it did. Okay, yeah. so do you want to talk a little bit about that? What was that relationship like, um, dating somebody who was in the industry? Um, it was a learning experience. I learned a lot um, about myself. I learned a lot about the industry. I learned a lot um, about guys. Um, because what really was the key thing was, like, I grew up in the industry, but it was always underneath my parents and, like, you know, sheltered a little bit. And, like, I didn't get to see, like, the bad stuff, if that makes sense, like, the scary stuff or, like, the stuff that hurts your feelings um, mm-hmm. and the not-so-nice stuff. And I feel like being with him, it was it was a, me being in the industry, like, without my parents and, like, in somebody else's world. Or, like, I just feel like it's almost, like, regions in the music industry. And it's, like, this side and this area. And, you know. So I was in Atlanta with him, like, without my my parents, like, you know, filtering out what I'm seeing or being around or what's being said to me and stuff. So, like, it was definitely, like, a learning experience to, like, you know, help me grow up a little bit. Um, and, like... It definitely made me a little tougher mm-hmm. because <laughs> men in the music industry do not respect women uh, most of the time. Mm. So it gave me, especially outside of like home, like this is, you know, I get respect here and nobody's really disrespecting me. But like I was in Atlanta and they don't they don't respect women. You know, they don't respect women in like in what regard? Like, you know, I feel like most of the time if a woman walks in the room, they kind of just think of her as like a bitch or a hoe like just like mm. a random like you know she, you not know she doesn't yeah not like as a woman that has like something to say or like has thoughts or like has ambition or like you know and it's it's okay because I, everything happens for a reason i wouldn't change it because i wouldn't be where i am right now if you know i hadn't learned those things and experienced those things and got my feelings hurt mm-hmm. you know but not just him but just like the people around him and it was just like it was just a wake-up call and it really like Maybe be like, okay. Right. Experience All right, is one of know. the best teachers. Yeah. I mean, so because you can't you can't get stronger or like like cause if I didn't go through that, like who knows? Like I run into something and it really hurts my feelings and like 
you know, it just made me tougher. Mm-hmm. And so now if any if anything happens similar to that, like I know how to deal with it and nobody's, you know, it's just not, not mm-hmm. happening. So the spread thin challenge had the girlies in a chokehold. And oh. you <laughs> participated in that. And I thought it was very interesting. You shared your highs, your lows. Mm-hmm. So for those who haven't seen it, what have been some of the highs of your year so far? Um, some of the highs. Oh, it's been so many. Um, I think it's been so many. Um, I stepped out and I'm single. I did my first collab um, with a male artist, Fergie Baby. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, used to it. If y'all don't know, yeah. stream that. Mm-hmm. Um, what is it? I got to a million. I got to... 1.5 million on um, Apple Music, like streams overall. Overall, I got to 100,000 streams on Spotify. I dropped my new single, Bad Decisions. It went crazy. Like, the, the release party was, like, insane. And people really, like, showed up and, like, showed love. Um, what else? I opened for Melanie Fiona. I opened up for Travis Scott. I opened up for Dream Doll. Um, I performed at the Daniels Leathers Fashion Show. Mm-hmm. So, all right, and but you also, with the highs, there also are the lows, and not only on that TikTok, but also on your Instagram, you were very open about sharing. There were times that you kind of felt like you were at your lowest. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling now? How is your mental? Um... I'm I, I'm good right now. Like I definitely am one of those people. I feel like there's like two ty- like there's people that deal with like depression and like you know really intense things like that. And then there's people who like kind of just deal with like it in the softer sense or like mm-hmm. the sugar coated sense. So like keeping it cute. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> I keep it cute. I try to stay busy. Like keep my mind busy. Like I feel like my mind just does a lot sometimes. So it can. I can, I can go inward sometimes and I kind of just have to focus on keeping my energy going outward. So mm-hmm. that's kind of where I'm, I'm at right now, like just trying to keep my mind busy. It's getting cold outside, so like it's hibernation mode. So like, right. you know, I'm just, I'm painting more. Like, you know, when I'm inside, that's kind of what I do. I like draw and paint and write. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that's just I mean, I really like commended you when I saw that post oh. um because I think it is also important to let people know that they're not alone in going through stuff like mm-hmm. that yeah um do you think that that's important to be transparent with your audience or do you think like I don't know like yeah I do because things? you know that's that's a lot of it like when people get to a point where they're like committing suicide or whatever it's like they're feeling alone and they're feeling isolated and they're feeling like there's nobody else that's been here and gotten out of it and Mm -hmm. like gotten through it. So it's like, you know, I've had low times where I felt like that and me just being here, if I could go back to my myself at that point and like, be like, no, like I've been there. I was you and I, you know, got out of there and now I'm happy and now I'm in a great place. Like that could really do something for somebody because, you know, that's really the core of it it's like feeling alone and feeling like you can't get out of a place like even me with my career like a big part of it is like showing the next generation that you can do it because just seeing that somebody can do it just does so much Mm -hmm. it does so much for you like it it puts like belief Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I mean even in the show you were in Mm All-American and even that tackled something that was very hard Mm -hmm. for a lot of people going through drug abuse and i think that that's commendable too that you're Mm -hmm. doing something like that and you're on a platform that speaks about that how was that process of you taking it from the music side of things into film and tv oh it was so scary i was so scared was that your first acting gig um yeah it was but i i have um been acting and like auditioning and like gone through a couple agents since i was like um nine so i've been you know in like classes and workshops it's definitely been something i've been honing and like Mm -hmm perfecting and working on but um it was so scary oh my gosh especially because like I had to go to LA by myself because of COVID reasons like I couldn't not that like I needed to bring somebody with me but like it was like you know completely different world Mm -hmm. that I was approaching all by myself and Mm -hmm. I booked the show when I was 17 so it was just like it was just really scary you know so I was like oh my gosh 
And I remember my first day, like, my aunt was like, oh, you should go, like, early. Like, you should be there early. And I was like, okay, cool. So I went, like, an hour early. And nobody was there. Nobody was there. It was just the drivers. And I took an Uber, so they were like, they were like, um, oh, are we good? Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, I took an Uber there, and I was like, with my, with my bag and my computer and everything. And I was like, hi, um, where's my trailer? And they were like, girl, I don't know. Who are you? They were like, what? <laughs> and then they were like, nobody's here. Like, it was just the, the drivers that, like, drive over all the equipment and stuff. Right. And I was like, I was so embarrassed. No, that cold time is and the cold time. I know. And it's, and it's like, and then we were on location my first day. So we weren't at the Warner Brothers lot. We were at, like, a, a school, like mm-hmm. a church or school thing. Mm-hmm. And, and so, yes, yeah, so I went around the corner, and I called my best friend, and I was just, like, crying. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to leave. Like, I can't do this. Like, oh, my gosh. Because it was, like, nobody, like, to tell me what to do or, like, I don't know. I was just freaking out. And then, um, yeah, and then I came back because I was really about to go home. But I came back, and I put on my big girl panties, and I went. And then they were like, hi, Journey, welcome. This is where. And I was like, oh, if I left, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have gotten that, you know. Mm-hmm. welcomeness but yeah i was it was really scary like it was really scary and then of course i was the youngest person on set right um so it was just it was a lot but but after like my first day they were so 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 kind and so like welcoming like my first day they were like playing my music the whole oh, time on like the speaker it was it was really it was really really nice and yeah they were all very welcoming and they could tell I was probably, like, super nervous. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And what's your relationship like with them now? Are you still in contact? Um, yeah. Um, me and Samantha are, like, cool. Um, yeah, we're, we're all cool. And it's a lot of us are just, like, mutuals on social right. media. Right. Um, but, yeah. Okay. Cool. So you think this is going to be a thing? Are you going to be on TV more? Is this something that you want to tap into? Yeah, I mean... Um, auditioning is like a constant thing so i i'm i'm always kind of auditioning and and keeping that going because i still have my agent like mm-hmm. i'm still working with them so i'm auditioning like every week a couple times a week for like all types of shows all types of shit so yeah um, it's definitely a thing in the future i'm working on that and it's a passion of mine but like the music is definitely like mm-hmm. first but yeah of course if you could be on a show what show would you pick a current show that's um, on right now Probably like Ghost, like The Power. Okay. Book two. I could definitely see Anderson yeah. in New York. So mm-hmm. I could definitely see Yeah, I, I, I like that show. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So what else is coming? Like, what else can we expect from Miss Journey Montana? Expect a level up, okay? I love that. There's about to be a very, it's about to be a level up. A change is on the way, and I'm just super excited. Um, the, pro- the EP is coming, and my next single. My next visual. And, yeah, we're just going to keep leveling up. Wait, what's the next single, sis? Because it's a couple that we waiting on. The next single is, it's probably Rich Girl. It's probably Rich Girl. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What? I love that. No. I mean, but we're, <laughs> keep interrupting the thing. Okay. Well, is there anything else that you want to say before we wrap this up? Anything you want to get out, the words to your supporters? Stream bad decisions. Oh, your mom's a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, you said what you said. What Stream you bad like. decisions and your mom's a hoe. I said what yeah. I said. Okay, and shout out your socials so that they know where to find you. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Journey Montana, J O U R N E Y M O N T A N A. You can find me on TikTok, Journey Montana 2, just the number two. Um, Twitter, Journey Montana underscore, and yeah, everything else, just Journey Montana. Okay, well, thank you for coming. So good to have you. Thank you for having me. And we'll see y'all later.